Okay, so uh, I welcome all of you for uh, the third session today. Uh, it's a very exciting session, um, like introduction to vision. So the speaker, let me introduce uh, uh, today's speaker. So it will be given by Dr. Ashish Kumar. So Ashish is a student in electrical engineering in IIT Kanpur under Professor Behra. He earned his B.Tech from Jaipur Engineering College and Research Center Jaipur and M.Tech from uh, IIT Kanpur. Actually, during MTEC and uh, I was there, we met together in 2016 here and and then we, we also participated in Amazon Robotics Challenge and he's one of the very, very fine uh, person in vision in our whole group. Even we traveled outside and I saw that his works uh, used to get a lot of accolades. So he actually, his current research includes developing neural networks, novel architectures for uh, edge computing devices in order to run computer algorithms in real time robotics. So, so he, we, he participated in, he designed actually all the vision pipeline electronics uh, during our robotics challenge, both in 2016 and 17, where we were almost a third among top 40 teams. So it will be a very, very exciting entertaining sessions. He will, he will show you a very, uh, entertaining uh, applications of computer vision and robotics. So let us welcome Ashish. Uh, okay, Ashish, so uh, here to you. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Ashish. Uh, I'm a PhD student and working under the supervision of Professor Lakshmidar Behra. So uh, my current research involves designing neural networks for autonomous drones. So it's not limited to drones. So it can be used for any kind of uh, robots, including host. Hello, is it fine now? Yes, yes, audio is fine, no problem. Okay. So today uh, we'll talk about a little bit of uh, introduction to robotics and uh, prim primary focus will be on computer vision. But uh, in the discussion, I'll, I'll start from scratch how to develop a robot or you can, you can think of that. Uh, what are the primary components of uh, robotics and then how to integrate them. And then we will move to uh, the advanced level of robotics. So it will be just a, a, an, an introduction, introductory uh, session. So no technical details, nothing. Okay. So, uh, so you can uh, like read on the slides. So, uh, the upcoming slides are simply uh, meant to introduce you with the technologies available. So if you don't understand anything, so please don't panic. Just enjoy and just uh, it, these are just to know you, just to introduce you that uh, when you start your career in engineering, so you, you will have a brief idea of, of the things which actually exist in this area. So you can you can like uh, start in the area of robotics. If you, if you don't want, then you can you can do uh, anything you want. So uh, let us start with the introduction. So what is uh, robotics first of all? So robotics is an interdisciplinary field uh, which combines primarily uh, several engineering streams such as uh, electronics, communication engineering, uh, electrical engineering, computer science engineering, and uh, also mechanical engineering. There are some other branches as well, but the primary role is, uh, is uh, uh, given by each day, electrical, electronics, computer science, and mechanical engineering. <clears throat> so what is the primary aim of robotics? So uh, robotics is aimed at designing and uh, developing machines which can either assist or uh, replace humans in order to improve quality of a given task. For example, in manufacturing plant, in a car, manufa in a car manufacturing plant. So there are several tasks which if human performs, they won't be uh, a good quality of uh, products. So, therefore, uh, so in order to automate uh, those tasks, robotics machines are designed. And uh, robotics has several applications. So, it has wide variety of uh, applications actually. So, it ranges from military, agriculture, domestics, farm robotics, surveying, surveying of uh, like some properties, lands, interplanetary explorations to see uh, you read in the news. Right? So, there are uh, many exciting applications of robotics. <coughs> Sorry. So, uh, 
So robotics, uh, as, as I have explained that robotics is basically the amalgamation of uh, several branches. So uh, we will start with uh, mechanical engineering or mechanical design because uh, uh, if, if you want to see anything in the existence, so there should be a skeleton. So without that, there is nothing. So mechanical design is the, the first and foremost thing which you, which you have to uh, think in order to realize, in order to build any kind of robot. So uh, skeleton means it's mechanical structure, like uh, for example, uh, if you want to build a machine uh, or a robot which can move, so you will think about it. It has a platform which has uh, wheels. So in, in that way, uh, you, you think about its mechanical structure that how uh, how things are connected. So primarily the mechanical design is done in the software. So if uh, the design is very simple, so uh, then it can be done uh, like on, on paper paper or rock work and then you design. But if the design is much more complex then you design it into uh, software. So let me show you an example. I currently have a uh, tab opened. So this is uh, a software, Autodesk Fusion 360. So in this software, you can design any kind of uh, any kind of product, any kind of uh, robot, machine, anything. So uh, currently, I'm working on uh, a drone prototype. So this this design actually, uh, which which is uh, which you are currently seeing, it it, it is uh, a drone design uh, for very lightweight and autonomous uh, applications. So. Uh, uh, this is uh, another design. So in that way, you can design your mechanical structures. So then in order to bring any kind of machine uh, into life, you will have to uh, involve electronics. Without electronics, without, without electronics, you cannot, uh, uh, you cannot execute operation uh, using that machine. So electronics is basically uh, an interface uh, interface by which uh, human and uh, uh, the robots communicate. So it is a very abstract definition of uh, electronic system uh, in the involvement of electronic system into robotics. So uh, the in electronic system, the primary components are uh, uh, CPUs, microcontrollers, uh, motors, linear actuators, power supplies, uh, and uh, in order to uh, in order to interact with the workspace, the robots are uh, usually endowed with uh, sensors, various sensors such as ultrasonic sensors, infrared, humidity sensors, gas sensors, pressure sensors. So it totally depends uh, upon the uh, application. So for example, your uh, application is to detect temperature of some surface. So you will deploy a temperature sensor or thermal camera. So this slide essentially uh, shows a, a, a block diagram of a robotic system. So, uh, the, so there is a, like important section with the CPU that communicates with uh, each and every sensors mounted on the robot, and uh, it communicates with the interaction or uh, interface devices uh, with which it also communicates with the human in form of uh, buttons. For example, uh, you have uh, your keypads on your mobile phone. So those keypads, uh, the input from the keypads is going to some microcontroller or microprocessor in your phone and by which you are interacting with the actual software. So the robot also have uh, the microcontrollers. Uh, then you have uh, sensors like ultrasonic, the first, the first sensors in the ultrasonic plot diagram is uh, the uh, ultrasonic sensor and the second one is infrared sensors. Then you have actuators or you, or you also can see the propulsion system. Uh, for example, if your robot is mobile robot, mobile robot means uh, it has some wheels. So in order to uh, run those wheels, you will require some kind of electric propulsion. So for that, for that uh, you, you require motors. The image which you are currently seeing is a brushless DC motor. So then you have to power on or uh, power on your robot in order to uh, make it work. So for that, you will require some power supplies like 5 volt, 12 volt. So for that, uh, 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 switch more power supplies, SMPSs are used. So after that, we move to microcontroller programming. So uh, I think uh, 
uh, I am like running quite fast because this is these are only abstract. I'm telling uh, I'm talking about uh, the abstract concepts because if I go into uh, too much technical detail, so it would be hard to digest. So, uh, uh, so these microcontrollers are usually programmed. So, uh, whatever you want to achieve is, uh, is is called algorithm. So, you write your algorithm into low-level programming languages such as uh, C, C++ or assembly. So, assembly language are usually machine machine instructions. So, actually, programming in assembly language is quite uh, challenging because in order to do that, you will have to memorize so many of uh, uh, machine instructions like uh, addition, move, copy, compare, and compare instructions. So you will read about these instruction sets uh, in your uh, probably uh, I think second or third year of when you when the uh, when you will read the microcontroller and microprocessor architecture. So it is just for uh, introduction. Uh -huh. So with the help of this program, uh, you alter the special function registers and general purpose registers also known as RAM into the microcontrollers. So you write some binary codes uh, into the microcontroller and uh, your uh, this manipulation basically replicates the behavior of your algorithm. Uh, okay, so this is an image which uh, typically shows a compiler or microcontroller. So this compiler is, uh, uh, this compiler works for uh, the microcontroller of microchip. Microchip is a company which provides very uh, industrial grade high quality microcontrollers. So there are several variants. Like it also provides DSP 32 bit microcontrollers, 8 bit microcontrollers. So I'm showing you a live example. So uh, this is uh, a program which I recently wrote for some application. So, so in this way, you write your program. So these registers are basically the special function registers. So these these are dependent on the hardware architecture. So every company manufactures its uh, own arc, uh, own microcontrollers and uh, name accordingly. So in order to program any kind of microcontroller, you will have to read about these uh, special function registers, and then only you can work. So so uh, so this is the thing. So you can make your program as complex as you want. Uh, depending on your application. So back to slides. So I think uh, many of you might have heard about uh, Arduino. So Arduino is the most simplest way to learn microcontroller programming. Uh, so you can start with Arduino and uh, then you can gradually jump to uh, the uh, programming style which I mentioned earlier for this one. So then you have the, okay, let's, Let's uh, see some videos about the application of uh, uh, mechanical design, electronic system. So it would be great to see a video. So when I was in my undergraduate, so I used to do uh, a lot of robotic stuff and uh, I built uh, so many electronics projects. So I'll show you a couple of videos. So first of all, a very simple um, video about uh, uh, soccer. So this video was actually very old. At that time, mobile resolution, mobile camera resolution was not very good. So the task of the machine is to grab these balls and put into the center. So this is uh, currently a manual robot. So it has two wheels, and in the front there is a tester wheel, which is which is not actually actuated. Uh, a person is uh, controlling this robot manually. So this is a manual robot. There is no uh, any kind of uh, sensors or any kind of microcontrollers. So this is a very basic kind of robot. So when you start with robotics, you start building such kind of robots. Then you gradually move to more complex variants. Like for example, uh, building motor drivers and then controlling uh, uh, microcontrollers. Then we can see, uh, okay, we can see this project. 
So what this project does is you uh, you send a message onto some number. So this this project is actually JSON enabled. So you send your message onto this uh, onto this number, and the message will be displayed. So let me fast forward it. So this is the simulation circuit of uh, uh, this project. Ashish, just a second. Can you uh, slightly decrease the voice of the video so that your voice comes a little louder when both go simultaneously? Okay. Your... Okay, okay. Is it good now? Yes, yes. Now it's okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So you can once again tell about this project. Yeah. So this one is uh, the simulation circuit for the project, and this is the output screen. Uh, this this array this, this is actually an LED array it shows it displays the message uh, typed by the user. So when the system starts or when it is programmed for the first time, it is empty. So the empty message is stored in the EEPROM memory. So it reads from the EEPROM memory and displays it. So I'll show you. I'm sending the message on some number which is currently attached with the project. So it will show the same message onto the LED array. So as you can see, what I have sent is getting displayed on the array. So now, I, now I'll uh, decrease its speed to the screen speed. So there are several functions which are implemented. So it is all done in C, C++, and there is a microcontroller involved. So it's it's a circuit board, it's a full uh, circuit diagram. Everything is designed uh, in the in the software, and then we have. Uh, uh, fabricated into simply into rooms. There are no machines involved, nothing. So such kind of things you can do uh, in your engineering time. You can learn. So then, uh, okay, this is uh, another project which is basically automatic RFID tool. So uh, this is a very small prototype version. So it has a, a RFID card. So an RFID tag will be mounted on any kind of vehicle. So whenever a vehicle passes through this RFID toll booth, so it automatically detects some particular amount, uh, and that amount is reflected on the computer screen. So I'll fast forward the video. I'll just show you it's, it's working. So these are RFID tags. So as you can see, uh, as I brought uh, that uh, that RFID uh, tag near the RFID reader, so if there is a sufficient balance, so it will open the gate. So okay, let's uh, get back to the presentation. Okay, so primarily the robotics is the uh, robotics can be divided into three uh, sections: so manual wired and wireless control then we have assisted it means that part of work is done by human uh, while part other part of the work Ashish, sorry to disturb but some people are saying that your voice is little low so can you be a little louder uh, okay uh, is, is it good now Hello? to me it was fine but some people were saying that it was low okay uh, i think uh, uh, from my side i have increased the gain Fullest. In Zoom also there is a yes, setting. Yes, yes, yes. I have microphone. increased the key. And again it's full. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, maybe they can increase their gain of uh, speaker or maybe uh, uh, their headphone. Okay. So uh, the second second one is assisted robotics, where part of the work is done by human and part of the work uh, is done by robot. Then we have the fully autonomous variant where the robot is capable of uh, 
making decisions on its own and can execute uh, all the actions independently. So uh, here in, in my research, uh, along with other uh, colleagues, our research is mainly focused to making the robot fully autonomous. So we will talk about the only about the autonomous robots in the in the upcoming slides. So in the autonomous robotics, as you can see, uh, uh, if, if you see in daily life, uh, when we are doing anything, so the visual perception is very important in our daily to uh, in our day to day life routine. So if if for example, if, if a person is uh, uh, like deaf, so uh, please uh, like don't consider it otherwise. I'm just uh, uh, saying some examples. So if a person is deaf, but uh, the person is visually capable, so it can like uh, lead a good life. But if a person is blind, then it is very much challenging for the person to uh, to like uh, perform daily tasks. So in the, in the same sense, visual perception also plays a very important role um, for autonomous robotics because uh, it's a much richer source of information. So most of the uh, most of the research in artificial intelligence and machine learning is uh, dedicated to the computer vision. So uh, it's, it's not like that. There is also research going on other parts like speech processing as well. Uh, but uh, the major contribution is being done in visual perception, and then the algorithms are being transferred from uh, one stream to another stream. So, in visual perception, if you see in the daily daily life, so what what do you perform? The essential task. So, you you are continuously observing your uh, workspace or uh, your environment, and every time you are performing uh, some kind of object detection, uh, then uh, some kind of object detection, for example. Uh, if, if you are uh, like watching a movie, then your focus is on the TV. And then uh, some other time, if you are looking at phone, then your focus is easy on, or is, uh, on your phone. When you are moving across the road, you are uh, uh, typically focusing on uh, other pedestrians and uh, other vehicles incoming. So that part is called object detection. Then uh, we have some other term called instance detection and segmentation. So for example, uh, you you have an image, and in that image you have uh, five cups, uh, five identical identical cups. So uh, the instant detection relates to detecting each cup uh, individually. So the algorithm should say that there are five cups. So that is called instance detection. It means that how many instances are there of the cup. And segmentation is uh, I'll show you in the in the details in the upcoming slides what is segmentation. So uh, when the uh, computer vision started, so at that time, uh, the computation power in the computers was not enough. So that is why the people were bound to develop uh, application-specific algorithms. So those are also named as classical algorithms. So, but in the modern days, we have a tremendous amount of computing power in our hands, for example, GPUs. So machine learning algorithms typically run on uh, GPUs these days. Uh, and uh, deep learning is particularly of use, useful because uh, it is providing very good results uh, uh, in real world applications, especially in computer vision and uh, natural language processing, that is speech processing and other ways. So this is uh, a very brief or you can say abstract diagram of an autonomous robotic system where there are two components, software and hardware. In the hardware, there are vision sensors such as cameras, optical flow sensors, and there are like several kinds of vision sensors like thermal cameras as well. Then we have uh, actuators such as motors, and then uh, there can be end, end detectors. So for example, your hand, your uh, hand, your fingers are uh, basically falls in the category of manipulator, manipulator system. In the software part, we have uh, uh, visual perception system. For example, in your brain, you have uh, a visual cortex, which basically processes the, all the visual information and sends that processed information to the deeper uh, parts of the brain, where uh, it is processed uh, depending upon its category. For example, uh, if you want to pick a bottle, so the information about the bottle will be sent to the uh, in a deeper part of the brain, and that information will be processed by the motor neurons in the brain, and motor neurons will send that information to your hands. 
uh, in order to correct the uh, lift or pick the uh, border. So there are other components as well, like trajectory planning, collision avoidance, so in trajectory planning, uh, for example, uh, if you want to pick a bottle, uh, so you move your hand from one place to another, right? So, uh, so the way you move your hand basically is called the planning, of, uh, you can say trajectory planning. So how you move uh, your uh, uh, hand in the workspace, in the 3D space, that is called trajectory planning. And then we have collision avoidance. So, uh, so when a robot moves in its workspace, so it should not collide with any other uh, any other uh, object or any other robot if, if there are co-working robots. So that part is called collision avoidance. So there are uh, uh, several kinds of algorithms for collision avoidance, trajectory planning, visual perception system. Then after making decisions, that uh, information is sent to the execution and control system, and control system is basically uh, the um, interface between the software and the hardware part. So it directly controls the actuation. So it moves the robot forward, leftward, or any kind of actuation which is currently uh, mounted on the hardware or your robot. So then we move to uh, a bit complex autonomous mobile system. So in the, in the previous section, the mobile uh, the, the robot did not have any wheels. So here in this uh, in this variant, the robot is now a robot does have wheels uh, this time. So some additional uh, processing power is required. So everything remains same, except now uh, in order to move uh, move for a robot to into a workspace from one point to another, uh, one point to another. So you you require uh, planning. So uh, for example, uh, let's let's suppose uh, there is a pole. Uh, you want to go from one point to another point. Uh, so there is a pole midway. So how how will you move? So you will avoid, you will move from one point to the second point in such a way that you avoid, to avoid colliding with the pole. So that part is done by the path planning. So the path planning basically takes care of the collision avoidance and it gives you a path. So uh, so that, that if the robot follows that path, it will reach from one point to another point uh, without colliding with the, any other uh, objects in the workspace. So then localization. So localization and navigation, these are very important uh, uh, aspects of uh, autonomous robotics. Without that, uh, a mobile robot is completely waste. So localization and navigation means, uh, so for example, a robot is moving into a workspace from one point to another point at any given instant, at any given instant time uh, T, uh, where is the robot in the, in the uh, workspace? So that information is provided by localization and navigation. And this information is basically uh, uh, processed using uh, various kind of sensors, for, for example, GPS or uh, inertial measurement unit or also called IME. So that that uh, that that information, that processing of information, basically falls into localization and navigation. Then we have a uh, autonomous flying system. So everything remains same except we have uh, additional work called stabilization. So in the case of mobile robot, the mobile ro robot always lies on the ground. So it doesn't, uh, uh, if, if, you, if you do not give any commands, it can stay still. But in the case of flying system, for example, drones, uh, stabilization is inherently necessary because uh, if you stop the motors or if the motors are unbalanced, so the system will keep on moving uh, randomly in the workspace or it may also collide. So for that stabilization is uh, required. So in this way, uh, we have discussed autonomous, simple autonomous fixed robotic system, which, which doesn't move. Uh, then we have a mobile system, which can move. And then the third one is, which can fly. So uh, next we will discuss the uh, levels of autonomy. So these levels of autonomy are, uh, are, are defined by the international standards. So level one, there are, uh, in total, five levels of autonomy, level one, level two, level three, level four, and level five. So uh, I'll share these slides. So you can uh, like, uh, you can read uh, more. Uh, also, you can surf on the internet about these levels. So in the level one, uh, the basically driver uh, is um, basically operating uh, full uh, its vehicle and only very partial things uh, such as only warning systems are available. So in the level two system, 
we can uh, we can uh, uh, like uh, uh, we can we can leave uh, the acceleration system uh, on its hands on on the vehicle's hand so vehicle can take care of uh, the uh, acceleration part so in that way the uh, working or you can say the complexity of the autonomous system is increasing so at level 5 you can completely shut down your eyes so currently uh, in the in the research part on the level 3 and level we, we are currently in the midway of level 3 and level 4 uh, the state of the art research is currently midway to level 3 and level 4 so <coughs> you might have heard about the tesla cars so uh, the autonomy implemented in those cars is currently um, midway to level 3 and level 4 so in the level, level three autonomy, uh, as uh, I have mentioned about the uh, object detection and understanding. So these are the essential capabilities in order to implement a level three uh, autonomous system. So for that uh, localization and planning is uh, also included in the capabilities of L3 autonomy. Then in L4 autonomy and above, uh, we move away from the algorithms because we have already stabilized our algorithms into level three autonomy. In the level four, we, we, we uh, talk more about the behavior and psychology of the algorithm. For example, uh, like uh, for example, the, the world is full of anomalies. So what, how our system will behave if uh, anomalies occur? For example, if a car is running at very fast speed and suddenly, very suddenly a person or any living being uh, appears in front of the car so how it will react so such kind of uh, very high level understanding is required in the level four and the above autonomy so uh, after that uh, we move to the visual perception system as i have mentioned that the primary task are object detection instance detection segmentation semantic segmentation uh, object tracking and geometric understanding of the scene so uh, we'll talk about uh, each of the tasks one by one. So in object detection, so as you can see in the image, uh, so there are four images. So one image is uh, fed to the computer vision algorithm, or you can say simply can say computer. So it will, uh, the algorithm should tell you where are the cars, where are the dogs, where is the host, where is the person, where is the bus, where is the driver, where is the boat. So this kind of task is called object detection. So you can see these rectangular uh, rectangular boxes. So these boxes are basically provided by the algorithm. So this is called object detection. So uh, this is actually a result of some algorithm uh, based on neural networks. So then we move to instant detection and segmentation. So this image basically shows an example of object detection, instance detection and segmentation. So as you can see, as I uh, told you earlier, that instant detection means, for example, you have five cups, you will have to detect each of the cups. So in the first image, you have several persons. So the algorithm is able to detect each and every person and then a mask corresponding to uh, each and every person. So that is called uh, segmentation. So in instant detection, you detect uh, each uh, entity of one kind and then you, you tell that, uh, which pixel in the image belong to which object. So that is called segmentation. Uh, then we have uh, something called panoptic segmentation. So in panoptic segmentation, uh, you provide the details about the background as well. So for example, in these images, only some objects are labeled in different colors, but the background is not labeled. So it is only instant detection. So in the panoptic segmentation, we also reason about the background. So where is the sky? Where is where are the trees, etc. So as you can see in the B uh, part of the image, so everything is labeled. So this is called panoptic segmentation. So uh, I'll talk about. Okay. So next is the video. So uh, first, let us see the videos. So I'll show you a video about uh, the autonomous system. Yeah. 
So this is a video feed recorded from the Tesla vehicle. Let's start with these 30 second clip is almost anyone example of what the forward facing auto. So as you can see that uh, this, uh, this feed is recorded from the uh, camera mounted on the car. So the, the algorithms are uh, reasoning about the linings, the boundaries of the road, where are the pace, where and uh, the car. Autopilot camera sees. And if you can see this part, so this is displaying that a vehicle coming in the front is uh, high beam or low beam, or the blinded basically shows sometimes what happens when the car, when the vehicle is moving, uh, the uh, it is uh, directly facing the sunlight. So the camera is uh, saturated, so uh, like it's blind. So that is uh, the event of blind. And then raining along with all the annotations made by the computer, so way, which demonstrates what the system understands about the world around it. Okay, so at first glance, it looks pretty complicated, but also pretty cool, right? Let's take a closer look at the details. Okay. Then uh, let's move to our slides. Okay, so the next part is depth perception. So, in the current, in the classical computer vision algorithms, uh, the depth estimation is done by stereo vision. So, uh, what is depth estimation? So, you have two eyes, so that is basically called uh, stereo vision. So, if you only have one eye, that is called monocular vision. So, uh, you you uh, you see, whenever you want to pick an object, you accurately know how far uh, the object is from you. For example, you want to pick a bottle, you know that uh, this bottle is roughly like one hand or two hand away uh, from my reach. So you can ac accurately reason about the object, which is like how far is that object. So in the robotic system, this information is very much necessary. So in order to achieve that, there are uh, like, uh, uh, apart from the cameras, there are something called depth sensor. So that directly provides you the depth, but the depth provided by uh, those sensors uh, is uh, like, uh, not accurate, uh, but it's uh, like if, if you want to increase the accuracy of type sensor, then cost increases. So for that, uh, currently the researchers have shifted to the machine learning approaches because uh, in our brain, we does not have any depth sensor. We are just looking at the images and telling how far the objects are. So in that way, we are uh, like biologically inspired and people are uh, developing algorithms based on deep learning and neural networks and uh, they are able to generate uh, such images. For example, in this image, if you see the first column, uh, sorry, first row, the, uh, the first image is the input image, and then the rest of the five images are the output of different algorithm. The first one is ground truth. Ground truth means uh, this, uh, these ground truth values, the actual depth sensors are uh, obtained by the LIDAR or some depth sensor. So as you can see, the depth sensor fails uh, in identifying the depth at the camp at the car boundary in this car, and uh, as you can see in the in the last, which is the some output of some uh, algorithm, so it is able to detect the boundary of the car. So uh, in that way, we can see that machine learning approaches are better uh, and cheaper as compared to the depth sensors because depth sensors are extremely costly. So this is the output of uh, some different algorithm. Okay, so here are a couple of different images. So, uh, so this is like uh, this is this whole column belongs to one algorithm, then second algorithm, then third algorithm, and fourth algorithm. So uh, basically, you can compare among them. The first one is actually the proposed uh, algorithm in, in the context of this image. So the first one actually behaves better. And so as you, as you also can see uh, that the boundaries uh, are very crisp in this image. Okay, so let's see some videos. Okay, so these the top image is basically a feed obtained by the camera, and the lower feed is uh, the predictions of the neural network, or you can say that computer visual algorithm, which is directly predicting the depth means how far is the tree or how far is the car uh, in the image. So the uh, if if the color is darker, it means that uh, that the corresponding pixels or corresponding objects are too far. 
uh, if it is yellow that means it's clear so while doing so you you may observe that uh, the sky appears to be very closer so actually this is uh, this the sky pixels are ignored uh, for evaluation and in real time by using semantic segmentation so this is currently a limitation of this uh, depth algorithm depth estimation algorithm using neural network so as you can see that uh, these poles, you can see this pole and this pole, this car here. So this is uh, uh, correctly being identified. You also can see this pole, this pole. So uh, people are doing uh, research in this area, but uh, uh, they are also improving. These algorithms are getting improved over time and uh, over the time. So um, you can also contribute. Uh, in, the, in this research. So this one, so the, these images are uh, corresponding to this paper. So this is the state of the art algorithm, which is quite accurate. So as you can see here, if, if you see the boundaries of this, uh, this uh, marker so it is quite accurate so this is currently uh, the leading algorithms for detecting for uh, estimating depth from single images okay so it might be too technical but uh, it is quite interesting to introduce you with these concepts so that you can uh, you can like decide what what you will uh, do in your uh, engineering time okay so as Ravi has mentioned that uh, we participated in Amazon Picking Challenge uh, 2016 and also in Amazon Robotics Challenge 2017. So uh, uh, this this first and second images are uh, the images of the robot currently performing uh, some task. So in the second image, the robot is currently observing the the container where many objects are placed, and the corresponding image is. Uh, uh, is shown in the in this image. So in that image, you can see uh, these uh, rectangles and green rectangles. So these green rectangles are basically provided by the computer vision algorithm, as we uh, saw earlier, like this image. So these rectangular in, uh, boxes are basically corresponding to that uh, uh, how many objects are there and where is the object. So it is called object detection. So based on these rectangles, this information is passed to the manipulation system, which plan plans the trajectory as we discussed earlier for this robot that how to move the hand in order to pick the object. So the fourth image is uh, the item is grasped and it is placing this object into the dot. So let's uh, see a video, I think. <laughs> So he is Professor Behra. The swing task actually we started working after we shift our consignment to Amazon making challenge And uh, you will see that we will mostly relying on uh, So there are several teams. Uh, currently it's our turn to perform the task. Yeah. Professor Behra is introducing our team and uh, what our robot will do and how will it do. So let's skip the video. These videos will be shared and this will be linked so you can watch them later. Here, the robot is actually looking at the container and it has identified one object. So it is, it is now going to pick this book, this funny book. So, so the part, did you notice that how this uh, this arm is moving? So this, this work is called trajectory planning. So now the robot is going to place this object, this object into the rack. So this process is repeated until all the objects in this container are uh, moved to the rack.
robot is going to pick it up. So everything is happening completely autonomously. So there is no human intervention. Everything is completely autonomous. Okay, so let's move to some other videos. Okay, so uh, I okay. Let, before that, uh, we will also see the videos related to Amazon Robotics Challenge in 2017. Two, one, so this is towing task uh, in Amazon Robotics Challenge 2017. This was actually a very challenging task uh, as compared to 2016. So in that, uh, uh, many unknown objects were given. So our, the, the task of which particular algorithm was to detect them. Uh, and these algorithms were not shown to the algorithm of the uh, So. This, the sensor in the blue, you can see this blue sensor is uh, the depth camera, and uh, the, and the top one is the TV camera. So, uh, actually, these cameras uh, are not readily available. We search them and disassemble the actual camera. This, this RGB camera is actually surveillance camera. So, we ordered them and disassembled. So, that way, uh, the robotics works. So you have to uh, identify correct components and integrate them in order to make them work perfectly. So currently the robot is performing the drawing task. It is taking every object from uh, this container and taking it into the rack. So everything is happening uh, completely, everything. So there is uh, like not even a single input uh, going on from This is the suction system. If we use vacuum cleaners for the suction Then we have picking task. In the picking task, you do the reverse of the turn task. Means you uh, pick an object from this uh, rack and place into the uh, packaging container. So let's directly jump over the actual task. So in this stage, uh, the robot is uh, looking at the rack. It has correctly identified the Everything is being done uh, around the So in, in this competition, in, in the Amazon Robotics Challenge 2017, uh, we the third, fourth, and fifth rank in the uh, the worldwide rank. Okay. Now let's go back to the slides. Okay, so MBZIRC uh, was the latest challenge uh, in which we participated last year in 2020. It was held in February 2020 before uh, the lockdown. So, yeah. so the, the challenge basically consisted of uh, several tasks. We focused on uh, two tasks. So I, I'll talk about uh, the task uh, using drones. So this is this, this was the uh, latest work which were done by uh, our team. So in this task, there was a UAV. So you have to develop a UAV along with a manipulation system, means a gripping mechanism. So the task was to autonomously build a wall, or you can say like you, you can see these cuboidal blocks. So the task was to pick these cuboidal blocks autonomously 
and arrange in arrange them into certain patterns so so this problem uh, uh, you will like see through videos actually so if you see through these videos you will okay i think So this is uh, the system. This is matrix DJ matrix 600 drone, and uh, the cutting system is completely hand designed. Uh, it was designed in the software uh, which I talked about earlier. It's complete electronic system was designed uh, in the lab. So this is the vision system we, we talked about earlier. Like these are input images, the first row. Then the second uh, row corresponds to the instant segmentation. So in instant segment segmentation, we are currently detecting how many bits are there of different colors, blue color, green color, red color. And then we have part detection. Part detection means there each brick had uh, some yellow identifier, yellow marker on each brick. So we also had to detect because this was ferromagnetic region from which uh, we had to grasp uh, this uh, uh, any 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 brick. So the gripper was basically electromagnetic electromagnetic induction based gripper. So these are the test outputs of our algorithm object tracking. So this is uh, the drone flying, uh, and this is the gripper currently disarmed. So the gripper is now armed. So this this drone is performing uh, uh, this uh, uh, is manipulating these bricks uh, in a very autonomous fashion. There is also heavy wind flow. The target pattern is uh, red brick, red brick, green brick, green brick, and blue brick. So the robot has to pick up every object and place it here. So it, it may be imperfect, uh, but uh, our task was to automate uh, uh, this drone for the required task. So the, the drone is actually making a series of operations, uh, for example, computer vision, then motion planning, how it had to move, how it should avoid other objects colliding with other, uh, other objects. So did you notice something at this point? Sorry. Yeah, at this point. So this brick is actually quite wide. So this drone actually can pick up a payload of uh, six kilograms. So the rotor draft is actually very high. So whenever it picked, so it immediately uh, the, the brick immediately fell off uh, the drone because of the strong uh, draft. So this was a failure of uh, in this uh, system. So this is this experiment was done in the evening time, just to test uh, how much uh, algorithms are robust. Then this is a very heavy brick. Okay. So this was our latest work. Okay, we have already seen this video. Then 3D mapping for autonomous vehicles. So 3D mapping is uh, basically a concept where uh, in, in any environment, you actually build uh, the geometrical maps of your uh, workspace. Geometrical maps means uh, for example, if you have images, you you cannot tell, you cannot tell about uh, any object that how big is uh, the building or how how tall is the person. So in order to achieve that, you make 3D maps. So 3D mapping is uh, altogether a different domain, but it falls under the category of computer vision algorithm. So I'll show you a video that was my work with the Autonomous Vehicle Division for Ford Motor Company USA. I did it in 2018. So, uh, okay, let me show you the video. <laughs> so 
so we do not need to focus about this algorithm because these are very high level details so what we do in this algorithm is that uh, there is a lidar sensor which basically gives you the 3d <coughs> measurements from region measurements of the world so the restriction of the lidar is that it can only provide these ranges uh, up to a certain distance for example 80 meters so but what happens uh, that uh, in 80 meters uh, our workspace is not constrained in general the cities are very large so what what we do is the uh, the car actually navigates across the city and collects the lidar scans from different uh, positions so the next step is to uh, align these lidar scans because uh, since uh, the the 3d measurements are uh, taken from different locations different positions that's why they need to be aligned or the technical term for that is called uh, scan registration so this algorithm our algorithm was able to achieve the mapping accuracy below uh, like 2 cm so this was very good algorithm okay let's directly jump to the results okay so this is the mapping using uh, the traditional baseline traditional algorithm traditional uh, algorithms which were available during that time so as you can see the maps are not very crisp and clear so this is the output of our algorithm so as you can see that the maps are now uh, quite crisp and it's very high details map this is some different uh, sequence okay so this was all now uh, so let us uh, conclude this uh, presentation uh, with uh, takeaways so no matter from any stream you are like mechanical electrical computer science you should at least learn c c++ and python if you are planning to work in the area of robotics so and the second one is if you are uh, planning to learn robotics and to work in the area of robotics and you should know how to work with ross and open cv then in order to make your uh, robot working uh, you should also work on microcontrollers so there are plenty of uh, uh, different companies which manufacture these microcontrollers for example microchip atmel uh, uh, st microelectronics so uh, there is also uh, something called fpga which you also will study in your course work so you can also work on them so these uh, three skills uh, you you should develop uh, by the end of second year like you should be familiar with these concepts uh, and you should be like uh, very comfortable while uh, working on these uh, things so in in the final the in the later two years you should learn about the high level concepts such as machine learning deep learning and uh, then you integrate those uh, algorithms with uh, your hardware so if you do so so okay uh, so that uh, while working on these uh, concepts you should also participate in uh, several robotics challenges Uh, if you do not participate in robotics challenges and you are working and working so it would be like uh, uh, very it, it would it won't be very great so if you if you are working and you are participating in the robotics challenges you will meet uh, with uh, other uh, young minds and you will uh, get to know about their ideas as well so you should uh, start doing that from the first year as well so there are plenty of challenges which will be organized in, in the institute when you uh, come here uh, personally so uh, the above five points are basically a partial compilation of my engineering journey and the point when i started my engineering so obviously like uh, it's not only engineering i have done other things as well so finally if you do these things uh, so you will become a decent in the area of robotics so good luck in mind thank you very much so anyone if you if uh, wants to ask questions
Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Ashish. Uh, like uh, very nicely, you have covered all the topics and different areas in robotics. Uh, earlier, uh, yes, I was uh, having. It was very abstract, actually. So yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. you did not get anything in detail. But no, 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 no. no. Like, uh, like earlier, like many of us. Uh, uh, sorry, my video is Hello. not visible. I think. Yeah, yeah. Just a minute. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Hello, uh, so, hello. like earlier, like many of us has uh, this idea that uh, robotics is very glamorous topic and is very straight of the like very hot topic. But after hearing your session, I got this idea that although this is very glamorous topic, but we have to put lot of effort. See, there are so Can many domains. Me? Hello. Yes. 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 Ashish, you are audible. Yeah. So, like, there there are so many areas like one has to be expert and very nice i like that particular part that in btech you have done so many projects like you have already worked in electronics and designing all these things that's why you are able to do this thing and one more thing like uh, as ashish has shown this amazon picking challenge so i would like to share one particular experience about this so what happened uh, professor baira took complete team uh, for amazon picking challenge i think it happened in japan uh, so there before just one day before competition their uh, robot stopped working and everyone was in very panic that like uh, how what will happen now and how to manage things but just one day before what this Ash, ashish and his team they, they have done they completely dismantled the com robot and in single night they fixed all the problems and they won this competition also so from this robotics means from our lab only one name will come ashish so that's a, and uh, like in this like many of the things were there so you may not have understood this thing but from this we can understand that if we want to dive in this area then really we have to put very great effort and if you see ashish already started from its earlier days that's why he is able to do such high level things so if you are also interested then please take uh, get in, get in touch with us we will connect you to ashish then you can come and see different robots in our lab quadcopters all these things also you can learn so thank you very much ashish uh, before going to question answer session just a small announcement uh, uh, i want to make so after this session uh, seven o'clock we'll be having uh, dr ranjan behra from iit patna and he will be talking about uh, nikola tesla his life uh, his spiritual perspective of his life uh, so this will be really interesting session and faculty from iit patna he will be speaking so yesterday also we had faculty from uh, I, i am indoor so today also today's session will be very exciting so please do not miss this session so Ab abhishek is showing poster you can you can see this will be really exciting session so please do not miss uh, that's all for today from my side and then i i open uh, ground to for question answer session so please if you have some question you can put in chat box or you can directly unmute and ask please thank you thank you very much yeah ashish there were also some questions in the chat so uh, okay okay so the first question is how is it able to pick rough and uneven objects using the cube okay so this is a very genuine question so there are several objects which cannot be picked from uh, vacuum so luckily the objects which were provided during the competitions were uh, almost uh, pickable by a vacuum suction system only one object was there which was uh, not being pickable by this vacuum suction so we blacklisted that so for that you need uh, uh, finger based uh, mechanism so that is uh, actually quite challenging so uh, in our lab people are also working Uh, so there is uh, one PhD student Mohit Vora. So he works in the grid based uh, uh, grasping. Yeah. So then I think there is no more questions. So that this was the one only. Okay. So if anyone has questions. Uh, so Ashish, I also have one question. Like, uh, how did you do so much, so many projects in this things? Were you like uh, doing it all the time in your UG days? Like in IIT Kanpur, we don't get uh, so much time. So how did you manage all these things? Yeah, actually, UG? actually, yeah, this is a very uh, interesting question. I started learning electronics since my childhood. Like uh, when I was in second or third class, uh, like you know, people. like second and third class you don't know anything so at that time i used to uh, open up uh, open up toys and uh, electronic things at my home 
some electrical appliances so i used to open them up but uh, i used uh, i i could not put them back so slowly while doing that uh, i uh, and from my experiences uh, i learned about uh, so many things how how these things works what is inside them so it so it so this journey is basically started from the my from my early childhood so in sixth class uh, uh, i was playing with electronic circuits and i was designing electronic circuits not very high level but at least uh, very simple analog circuits so that was the time when i decided to be an electronic engineer in the sixth class so i followed accordingly and uh, i opted for uh, mathematics in uh, intermediate then uh, unfortunately i could not come for uh, bachelor degrees in uh, iit because i was uh, very much involved in doing these kind of things so i did not pay much attention to the studies but uh, just uh, to get uh, good marks uh, so that is why uh, i could not come to iit but uh, but it, it's all right you can learn things uh, anywhere but after finishing my uh, bachelor degree i came here because by the time i finished my bachelor degree i completely i like uh, i was doing electronics in my days and i i used to sleep i i remember i used to sleep only for uh, like at max 4 and 4 hours in my uh, th- second third and fourth year and i was all the time reading the uh, pdfs of electronic components uh, what are their specifications what are their current ratings uh, and uh, designing uh, electronic circuits uh, also electric machines so uh, so i completed my uh, btech in jaipur so there are several local companies i used to uh, design electronic circuits for them program them uh, according to their requirement so from so that industrial exposure that collaboration that freelancing was a bit my experience so after that i realized that there is something missing and that was computer vision so i came to iit kanpur for learning that so i specialized in computer vision uh, through masters uh, at iitk and then uh, i worked on several projects uh, here uh, at iitk mainly related to machine learning and computer vision so at this point of time so electronics i i did so much of electronics uh, in my childhood and in the bachelor so it's kind it's kind of a, it's, it's in my blood i cannot forget that so uh, currently uh, i'm doing like uh, many things in parallel so that all, that uh, like came from the past experience yeah, thank you ashish hearing you uh, i remember the three idiots movie ranchod das <laughs> oh, thank you so, so very you. glad to hear from you your experience yeah thank you thank you very much okay anyone else please there is one more question in chat box okay, could you please do some sort of project which we can do at home or what and for some fee and uh, robotics when we come to the campus okay so i think the i think you can what you can do at home is uh, first of all you can order some uh, arduino boards so uh, you can order them uh, some arduino nano or arduino uno so you can uh, start programming them uh, some simple input output so by the time you come here you will be at least familiar with how the thing uh, works then here you will uh, gradually uh, learn about more complex stuff so you you start with uh, this microcontroller thing and if if uh, someone is not interested in this microcontroller stuff then uh, you go for learning open cv so uh, for that you will have to uh, learn some programming languages c or c++ python Okay. Next. Hello. Yeah, uh, I think we'll wait for one more minute if any more questions are there. Yeah, sure. maybe you can also put your email id in the chat so that if anyone wants to talk to you personally he can uh, and we or if anyone wants to work with you and learn from you
that I have done it. So anyone who wants to contact, he, he or she can send. Uh, well, did, did you send it to someone privately? It is not free. Uh, oh, okay. Send it to I, Dr. Yeah. Bahira. In, in front of two, it should be everyone. Everyone, okay. Yeah. So, is, I think it's good now. So, I think uh, if there are no more questions, we can end the session here. It was a very wonderful session. And I enjoyed it a lot. So, I would like to thank Ashish. For I, this think session. It, I, I think it was boring. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was not at all boring. I, I, I don't know about other people, but I enjoyed it a lot.